folks. My name is Mike, and I want to welcome you to Annandale, Bavaria. We're taking you top of the Alps Mountains. How many of, let me ask this question out there so I know what type of audience I'm talking to. How many out there have been to Germany? Now, how many have been to Bavaria? Yes, there we go. So you know what we're all about. And I understand there's a lady here from Munich. I think her name's Ruth. B. Gates, Servus, right? So we're going to share with you tonight some Bavarian culture. Yes, it's part of Germany, but Bavarians think they're their own state down there. And if you talk to a Bavarian, he'll let you know. But uh, what we're doing is something called shoe plotling or shoe slapping. And uh, it was an imitation of an hour hawn bird over there that was a pheasant type creature that uh, the Jaegers or the hunters. So we're going to mix in some German language here. We're going to give you some culture. We're just not a German group. We're an educational group. So we try to go out and actually teach people about our culture in Bavaria. Right now, the long horns are coming out. They're called elk horns. And they're actually one piece of wood that's made from trees that grow out the side of the mountain because they have a natural curve. And they take it back in the wood shop and carve them out. So they, believe it or not, these were actually communication devices back in the day. Uh, because they needed to tell the people down in the valleys, hey, we need bread, we need this, we need beer, we need pretzels, things like that. So they actually use those to communicate from mountaintops to mountaintops. And you still hear them over there today. So off gates with Engelberger. I just want to let you know, folks. Andrew, come up here. Come up here, yes. This guy is uh, a trumpet player from high school and middle school, right? Sort of, yeah. So, huh? Right here, yeah. He, him and his dad, Paul over here, they're local people. They live right down the street. Andrew was in one of the local Boy Scout troops here. And this is his maiden Elkhorn voyage today. So when he did excellent. So I want you to give him a round of applause so he can continue. And actually, uh, all, all three guys are boys that were playing uh, are Boy Scouts or former Boy Scouts and uh, Eagle Scouts. So, yeah, uh, we kind of grow our own here in our group. Thank you, Andrew. That was excellent. So we, we look forward to hearing more from him. So speaking of uh, wonderful music and stuff, we have a wonderful selection for you next. It's called the Koenig's Yodel. Now, a Bavarian yodel is quite different than the uh, yodels you might hear down in Texas and places like that. It's more of a subtle yodel. And I believe we're going to have Heidi and Joyce come up, grab the two end mics there. Our other Alphorn player, Michael Brown. Uh, we're a multi-talented group. Uh, most of us are family members within the group. We're always looking for new members, too, to come in. And you don't have to be a musician. I'm not. <laughs> I'm a, I'd like to talk a lot, so they said, you can be MC. A uh, couple of things about our traditional while they're setting up there. Uh, 
all the parts of the costume actually mean something, believe it or not. It's just not for decoration or, or being ornamental. Uh, like, we have a knife pocket over here, and we have a, a knife. Well, people think, oh, that's just for decoration. No, it's actually a predecessor to the uh, Boy Scout uh, knife and fork and stuff. Back in the day, you know, way back in the early, what, 1600s, 1700s, when they went into a restaurant, there wasn't any forks or knives or anything. The silverware wasn't really out. You had to bring your own stuff. So what the Bavarians did, they put a little pocket in there and they carried a knife and fork right in their little side pocket so they could go out. This big belt I got on, it's not because I'm a wrestler or you know WWF or whatever it is now. No, this was actually a money belt at one time. They had coins back in the day. So this is actually hollow behind here and you can put all the stuff, all these coins in here. And it was a family tradition that was handed down. These belts were handed down. They're called a Ronson. And they were handed down through their family uh, for many generations. And ours has a saying on Gluck und Segen, which means luck and blessings. So I think they're ready. Let me get out of the way and let them perform. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to bring out some unusual instruments that you probably have never seen unless you are actually in Bavaria at a Gasthaus or a Gastuba. Uh, it is called the Hochbrett or a Hammer Dulcimer if you're in the folk music world. Um, and we have Michael Jr. there. That's my son. I'll brag a little bit. Uh, he's going to be playing a Buttonbox accordion or it's called a Steirischer Harmonica. And why it's called a harmonica is because actually Inside there, it's different than a piano accordion. How many musicians we got out there played piano at one time or another, or maybe even played accordion? Yeah. So most piano accordions, it's chromatic, and you can just pump it, and you know you play all the keys. Well, with a stylish or harmonica, it's played like a regular harmonica. So when you breathe in, you get one note. When you breathe out, you get another note. So that's the same way with each button on his box there. They hold two different notes, whether you're pulling or pushing on it. So you have to have your wits about you when you play that. So they're going to be doing something called the 
Grande Polka. I'm losing my voice because of the humidity out here. So anyway, take it away. I hope you were tapping your feet to that one. And uh, the dance floor is open. It's free. Uh, you can come out and dance polka if you like. Uh, we'll put on some moon music later. And, and who knows? Maybe we'll get you guys up dancing. But anyway, speaking of dancing, next we're going to bring out the bundle tons or the maypole dance. Usually this dance is done in May because it's a celebration for springtime to ward off the evil spirits and send those away, old man winter and stuff like that. And usually this dance was done in order uh, it was like a celebration because you wanted to have good crops this year, you would have plenty of rain, sunshine, and things like that. So each one of these dances has a meaning behind it. It's just not entertainment. Back in the day, people celebrated summer solstice, and usually that's around June 21st. They had big bonfires, and they still do today in Europe because that means you're getting rid of old man winter, you want to celebrate the coming of spring and things like that. And that's why they had the May, Maypole or Maya Fest, things like that. So these were very practical people back in that day. So just like with all the dances too, they were flirtatious type dances because that was the only way you could meet your future partner. And speaking of that, let's get on with the bondle taunts. Thank 
in the program here. Oh, uh, what's... Oh, okay, we got another yodel. Linus, Linus Edelweiss, and I'm sure many of you know what the Edelweiss are. The Edelweiss is a special flower. It's white, it has little specks in it, and it grows high, high in the mountains. And you have to really be kind of a mountain climber to get up there and get it. There is a uh, urban legend where if a guy really loves his fiance that he'll climb up the highest mountain and get her an Edelweiss. Well, now over there, they're illegal to be picked and stuff like that, but you can buy them. But uh, it is, uh, and this describes the little flower that grows high in the mountains. This is another yodel, another song from over there. So, oh, we got all kinds of instruments. A couple other things about the Bavarian culture. <coughs> Not all of Germany wears lederhosen. It's only in southern Germany, down below the Munich area and stuff like that, that you'll find people wearing lederhosen. It's in the mountains there. And at one time, these were actually longer. They're called Bundhosen. But they wore out at the knees like all kids, so then they made the lederhosen in the, in the pants. And t today, we're practicing traditions that were hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And if you ever have a Bavarian trivia qu quiz, the Chicago group called the Edelweiss Verein or Edelweiss Club is 101 year, actually they've had shoe plotting here in the United States for 102 years. Our club's been around since the early 50s. Some guys from Bavaria came here. They were farmers and one of our folk dance guys, uh, international folk dance leader, Dave Rosenberg, decided to start a Bavarian group here in Washington called Alt Washingtonia. And we perform around the area at Oktoberfest. If you're enjoying what you see today, this is just a smidgen or a tip of the iceberg of what we do. So come down to uh, Fort Belvoir, has a nice Oktoberfest down there. In a couple months, if you want to really get into the German festival and you have German heritage, uh, there's the Maryland German Festival in Timonia, Maryland at the fairgrounds there, indoor event, wonderful polka bands. And uh, at one time, we're sorry, uh, you know, big place, Blobs Park, Blobs Max, yes. I got Blobs Park fans out there. Uh, we used to perform there on a regular basis too, so we miss some of the Bavarian traditions. But we're here today, we're enjoying the nice weather on top of the mountain, so off gates. Hey! 
guys turn the show off again. I'm going to take you back up in the Alps Mountains there. Up there they have a bunch of goats and the old goats uh, hang around up there but when they get scared or something like that there's like one goat that's always on watch and he will jump real high and alert the other goats and stuff like that. So we can have a mixture of young kids here and goats, old, old goats and you know. Yeah I'll speak for myself Paul. So anyway uh, we're going to see who can jump the highest here and this is a dance called Gamsprung. Gums? is a goat and sprung means the spring and actually we have a couple of members believe it or not they are goat beards that they have out coming out of the top of their hats there uh, so that's and the rest of us have what they call oddler feather or flown uh, eagle feather so anyway with that off gates with comb sprung now you can see how we keep in shape so yeah it's been a little while for me actually believe it or not uh, we're gonna bring out some more instruments for you cowbells you're going cowbells yes and they have a practicality and if you go over to Europe right now or go to the mountains in Germany Alps 
you'll see all the animals have cowbells on. You go, oh, that's just for the tourist. No, it isn't. Why they have those, especially on sheep and stuff, is when they go high in the mountains and the meadows, there's no fences and things like that. And they still sit out the sheep herders. And if you hear a tinkling bell out in the distance, you know one of your lambs is missing. Or one of your uh, sheep or your cows are missing, something like that. So you can go find them. 